Good evening, everybody. This is Marty from Dog's Blog with tonight's podcast on the Frank Carson Head Elk Trial on January 30th, 2019. And um, today we had a very condition, contentious afternoon. And um, we'll go into some of that here in a little bit. I got a lot of notes. And uh, if you remember the noontime report, or if you heard the noontime report, you, uh, Marlissa Ferris said she'd give some citations in the that were in the transcript records and wherever that in regards to Bob uh, Robert Woody's state of mind and some of the things why he believed some of the things and uh, Marlissa Ferris was going to research that over the lunch hour and uh, come back at one thirty and give those citations to the judge. Well, Marlissa Ferris came back in at one thirty sat down and started looking for those citations at that point. She didn't do it during the noon hour like she had told the court. Of course, Judge Zuniga just sits there and lets her research and we're wasting time waiting for her in a jury not up in the courtroom as typical in this case. And so finally uh, she starts giving cites and bait stamps. And bait stamps is the, uh, the court file the, the, just an identifier that they put at the bottom of each uh, document that goes into these files that they turn over in discovery and stuff. So it's just for identification purpose. So attorneys can all be on the same page when they're talking about something in particular. So she's given bait stamps of the Robert Woody statement or thereof. And I'm, I noted on here almost immediately I said it sounds like Beverly Woody's statement from the preliminary hearing um and uh obviously and i also noted that she didn't look coming prior during the lunch hour she started at 1 30 she started looking and the researching um jai gohill addressed the court and says uh, uh, it also says in the preliminary hearing that robert woody Uh, did not say what the district attorney's office is saying, what Marlissa Ferris is saying. Uh, Robert Woody only told his mother only if something happens, but uh, gave her no details. Um, And they also said, the attorneys also argued that that sounds suspiciously like Monikia's statement, and maybe uh, she's conflating the two. Marlissa Ferreira says on the uh, 4 17 of 2016, that's when Beverly Woody was on the stand, uh, she says that Robert Woody told her about what happened. Um, um, Jai Gohill says Marlissa Ferreira is. Um, is arguing that the. Uh, this was not Robert Woody's testimony, but uh, is quoting Beverly Woody testimony. Beverly Woody testimony, not Robert's. And remember, in Beverly Woody's testimony in the preliminary hearing, um, they all confessed that they had concocted this story after the jail visit with a paper up to the window by Beverly Woody and told him, this is what you got to say if you want to get out of jail. And... Um, so this story was concocted and now she's trying to quote uh, Beverly Woody's testimony which was almost in its entirety struck in the preliminary hearing after they all admitted it was a lie Um, Judge Aniga was reading the testimony and I noticed too that Judge Aniga today in the last couple days uh, has been kind of mumbling into the microphone. Uh, she's not speaking up. I can't hear a lot of the things she's saying. Um, and Judge Aniga said that uh, Monikia said, is the one that said, if anything happens, tell them the attorney did it. It was not Robert Woody or Beverly Woody. Uh, Marlissa Ferris says the information... Co- comes from Beverly Woody, so 
She was reading from Beverly Woody's testimony. And Judge Inigua says Beverly Woody's testimony has been stricken. Um, Attorney Hans argued that Martha McGonigal had filed a motion to strike Beverly Woody's testimony and 95 to 99% of it was stricken. Beverly Woody had also said that Walter Wells and Frank Carson was on the property and at that night, which they have, re which he did recant and admit that that was a story made up. And Marlissa Farah, Han said, is projecting um, that these are now the truth after admitting that those were lies. Uh... He, Han said Beverly Woody flat out lied in this reference and in, in the preliminary hearing talking in reference to what Marlissa Ferrer was reading. Robert Woody has also said that he never made such a statement. But again, Marlissa Ferrer is trying to use that statement as his state of mind. Marlissa Ferrer argued to the court this is a basis for the um, this is the basis that, that talks about how uh, he was intimidated and scared of the outwalls um, Robert Woody said he did have a com conversation with his mom at home that night he came home and Robert Woody had told family and investigators uh, other statements prior to his custody status and now the defense is uh, saying Robert Woody said those things to try to get a deal prior consistent statement uh, to mom is what she's saying it is uh, as he was afraid due to the constant berating and the ongoing um, attitude that the, wall, the out walls had been giving him so they have to ask what he told mom. Jai Gohill argued that Marlissa Ferrer is trying to get in Beverly Woody's information that the court had excluded, her testimony. The judge has already ruled on this, and Robert Woody said nothing was said to mom. Robert Woody and Beverly Woody have admitted to these lies that she told on court in court. Marlissa Ferrer will lead Robert Woody into what she wants him to say. She's, he said, this is misconduct, plain and simple. Marlissa Ferrer started bouncing in her seat. And she told Judge Zuniga that Jai Gohill just threatened the court to try to, to, to uh, coerce the judge into ruling in his favor. Jai Gohill responded by saying that Marlissa Ferreira has just, on the record, uh, made an accusation that he has uh, tried to intimidate um, a member of the judiciary in court on the record and he says she may need a lawyer uh, based on her comments at this time uh, everybody was trying to talk at the same time everything blew up uh, judge says she can't talk we can't all they all can't talk at the same same time and she told Marlissa Ferreira it is an argument that Mr. Jai Gohill is making um, and uh, he has not threatened a judicial officer. Marlissa Ferreira can't let it go. She told Judge Zuniga that Jai Gohill is threatening a judicial officer and should be dealt with harshly. Judge Zuniga, Marlissa Ferreira is one of, on one of her patented roles, Judge Inigar tells her to stop um, and get serious, saying Jai Gohel is 
uh, get, she says seriously actually, uh, Jai Gohel is putting fear in the court. Do you really believe that? Um, Marlissa Ferreira interrupted her again and said she kept interrupting him and maintains her argument. Keeps telling the judge that she has that he has uh, threatened a judicial officer. Judge Aniga said Marlissa Ferreira is arguing argument of putting fear in the court is an improper argument and it shows disrespect to the court. Jai Gohill then asked for the court to order a copy of that record that Marlissa the record that Marlissa just made about accusing him of threatening a judicial officer and wants to present it to the state bar as mon conduct and he wants the record marked and is requesting a copy of it. Marlissa Ferra, uh, Judge Zuniga, um, took a few extra minutes. I don't know why she shows so much patience towards this kind of nonsense, but uh, told and told Marlissa Ferra to calm down. Let's get back on track here. Uh, Marlissa Ferreira's, Ferreira said Robert Woody has said he talked to his mother and the defense has said officers I'm having trouble reading my writing here put words into Robert Woody's mouth the Robert Woody conversation with mom has a good basis to not or actually be truthful she said it's up to the jury to decide uh, due to the threats to Robert Woody by the Atwals it goes the state of mind of Robert Woody Percy Martinez argued Marlissa Ferreira is asking Robert Woody to adopt stricken testimony by Beverly Woody on 8 8 of 2016 Robert Woody asked what he said to mom and he said not much he was reading a transcript and he was reading so fast I couldn't keep up with all of it uh, Robert Woody said something had happened but he gave her no details as he didn't anybody else at the time Said he didn't want to discuss it. But he did say apparently that Bobby and Dee were there. Percy Martinez said this is Beverly Woody's story that has been stricken. Robert Woody asked. Several times by Marlisa Farah if he had told his mother and he has said no. It's all stricken testimony, and it's not Robert Woody testimony to start with. But it's Beverly Woody's testimony, again, that's been stricken. It's improper for the court to allow Beverly Woody testimony in this trial. Attorney Hahn said Marlissa Ferreira said it goes to Robert Woody's state of mind as to fear of the Atwals. But Robert Woody only said something happened, but no details. So he says there's no state of mind. He didn't give any details. Beverly Woody's testimony was all and completely made up and untruthful. And Robert Woody said he didn't tell her anything. It is not a consistent statement. Uh, they're, they're trying to show consistency that he made statement consistent statements throughout. And it's not. Robert Woody said that he didn't tell his mother anything. Uh, he didn't give her any details about anything. Marlissa Ferrer now says it's not all Beverly Woody testimony. She says also it was not all stricken. In fact, very little stricken and Judge Janiga um, actually kind of looked at her kind of funny when she said that 
She said during the judge's holding order, it was a source of information that had a lot of facts, saying Beverly Woody had stated a lot of facts, and Robin Attenhofer may have been the source, or Robert Woody may have been the source, uh, but there's no way to ask Robin Attenhofer, of course, at this time. Beverly Woody knew it was Bobby and D on Frank Carson property. And she also knew what was done with the body. In the holding order, uh, Marlisa Ferreira said that Judge Zaniga said it was a foundation problem as to Beverly Woody and her testimony. You know, to Beverly Woody, there, there's nothing to establish that what Beverly Woody said uh, was true. Um, uh, and it, Robert Woody admitted that it was not true. Beverly Woody also said that there was a, and also testified there was a marked police car outside with Walter Wells standing outside uh, with, on, in addition to Frank Carson was there. Uh, Beverly Woody, she says, knew all the facts uh, with no discovery had been provided to her. Uh, did probably provide it to her to review, and I don't know how she knows that. But Robert Woody will say what he told Beverly Woody. It goes to state of mind. What the defense is talking now is cross-exam information. Now here we are coming up on 2.30 and the, the jury's still not in the courtroom. Again, she says, the judge can see what the uh, state of mind was in the ruling on the hold order. Um, judge Aniga also um, told Marlissa Farah, apparently she was talking under her breath a little bit, maybe whispering to Kurt Bunch, I don't know that she can hear her whispered comments and she doesn't appreciate it. And apparently she'd said something that uh, wasn't too nice. Marlissa Ferreira says she's just trying to help. And Judge Zaniga says, I don't need your help. I know what I'm doing. I don't need you to hold me by the hand here. And uh, Marlissa Ferreira says, oh, yes, you do need my help. Uh, she just couldn't let it go. And had a real issue going on. Judge Aniga asked Marlissa Ferrer to go into another area. Like she always does. And uh, she'll decide this big mass later. So at this point Robert Woody's on the stand. At 2.35 the jury came up. And uh, started taking testimony again. <coughs> So she asked him in regards to Beverly Woody uh, and Miranda Dykes on night that Corey Kaufman, they call it the homicide. Um, a couple of people had come out. They, Robert Woody was, Miranda Dykes was recording Robert Woody on the body wire, uh, in, in apparently in Robert Woody's bedroom. And he was trying to impress her, I guess, somehow. And... Um, He was trying to impress her or something. There's people that he said walked by or walked into the room. I guess they had to go through the room to go to the bathroom or something. There were several people that walked by. Um, Brian Coates was one. Uh, he didn't know what he was saying at the time that uh, Brian Coates um, had walked through. Um he, they refreshed his memory because he didn't really recall as he normally doesn't what he said. Um, uh, he was talking, Robert Woody said he was talking about when uh, the victim was shot, when Brian Coates came in the room, and Corey Coffin was shot that night, is what he was saying. Um, 
uh, he was asked if he ever told Miranda Dykes that he had uh, he felt bad for Corey Kaufman he said yeah I kind of remember again refreshing his memory uh, but he also said that Corey had brought it upon himself um, did not believe uh, that he had just made that comment to Miranda Dykes. He's saying that he doesn't really believe what he said. Uh, he just was talking a lot of trash. He was high and he was doing a lot of stupid stuff. He was asked if Miranda Dykes was asking questions. Uh, he says not much. Uh, he discussed Corey Kaufman's body and if it would have been found yet. He did not recall all of the conversation. He he didn't think at the time that he knew the body had been found at that point. He did not recall telling Miranda Dykes that the body had been found. And again, he had to read, read the transcript to, to come up with that. And then when he read that, he said something unintelligible. And I don't really know what he said. He really looked confused and I'm not sure what was going on up there. And there was a, uh, a non-responsive objection. Miranda Dykes, uh, he was asked if Miranda Dykes asked about the body. And he told her that they haven't found shit. And he told Miranda Dykes about the key holders. And... Everybody kind of looked around at each other and not knowing what he meant. And so Marlis Ferrer asked him, uh, what do you mean by the key holders? Robert Woody was stumped. Um, he really didn't know what what to say to that. I don't think he expected to be asked about that. I, I, I don't know why, but he didn't. And he was trying to convey, he said he was trying to convey that to Miranda Dykes, and he was asked again, well, what do you mean by key holder? He said, and finally, after a good minute, he finally said, well, the key holders are people like Bobby and D." And he would, they, she said, well, why do you mean by that? And... He actually was stuttering and stumbling for words. He didn't know what to say. He's And finally, he comes out with, Key holders are upper people. The Atwals are the kings, and people like myself, meaning Robert Woody, and Corey Kaufman are the pawns. So they're the kings, and he's the pawns. And she says, you mean like Frank Carson? He goes, yeah, like Frank Carson. I guess maybe that's what drugs do to you. I don't know. Um, he said that he had later talked to Miranda Dykes and that the body um, had been found. He didn't really recall. Um, he did talk about the body and it was out of town where he had left the body. He had cut it up somewhere on a pig farm and it was out of town somewhere. He did not he recall hearing that the body had been moved out of town or anything like that. Um, before he was saying that there was street talk that led him to say some of the things he's saying where he got his information. And he asked, uh, Marlissa Ferrer asked him, if he knew that he was being recorded on the body wire, and he said, well, not at the time, but I found out shortly late, shortly thereafter. He had told Miranda Dykes about cutting up and putting the body on the ground, on top of the ground, for the hogs to eat. And Marlissa Ferrer was, was trying to relate that there's a relationship between where the body was found and where body Robert Woody said he had put the body when he was trying to romance Miranda Dykes. Robert Woody knew 
Hold on, somebody just sent me a message. <laughs> so somebody just sent me a message that says, So Marlissa and Jake, me and Steve Jacobson, also known as Juice, and Kurt Bunch are key holders too. Well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Then again, maybe not. Uh, maybe they're just pawns too. Uh, Robert knew. She said that uh, Robert Woody knew the body was in the mountains and on top of the ground and did not bury the body in the mountains. So was telling Miranda Dykes the truth. And he said, yeah. Um, there was. Um, jury was sent out at 2.58 p.m. Um uh, the judge wanted to take a break because of all the the activity going on earlier, and the court reporter was working fast and furious up there. She really was. Um, so when it came back around 3.30 or so, um, Marlissa Ferrer immediately asked for a sidebar again after the jury came up. And she was looking at the transcripts of some of the testimony. I believe it was from the prelim and the citation she had given earlier. And everybody was looking at their transcripts up there. And I noticed the judge was uh, making notes and putting stickies on certain pages and doing certain things like that with the transcript. Um, so, when getting back to Robert Woody, she says uh, later, did he say what happened to Corey Coffin? Robert Woody did not recall. Refresh with a transcript. Miranda Dykes had asked what happened if he was stabbed or shot. Robert Woody said both. He was stabbed and shot. And Robert Woody said that he had mentioned stabbed. So she had mentioned stabbed. So he just kind of went with that. So stabbed and shot. He also told Miranda Dykes that Corey Kaufman has made his last fence jump. And Robert Woody did not recall where he got the fence jump information from. Remember, they're talking about jumping the fence into the yard and uh, end up getting killed that night. Uh, there was objections. There's a long sidebar. It was a very animated sidebar. Uh, it was a long sidebar. And uh, people weren't too happy up there. And when they finally came back, uh, he was asked about the statement of the fence jump to Miranda Dykes and what he was referring to. Again, there was an objection, a foundation. And when that objection happened, Judge Zuniga just stood there and she kind of froze. Um, she had no idea what the rule. And everybody just kind of stopped and was looking at her, waiting for her to rule. And it took her a good 30, 40 seconds to rule. And then she won't say objection sustained. She'll tell Marlissa Ferreira on all these leading questions that she asks and, and whatever. She says, uh, just rephrase. So talking about Corey Coffin, Miranda Dykes had asked about the fence jump. He did not recall. Refreshing his memory, uh, Miranda Dykes asked again if Corey Coffin did the fence jump to do the uh, thefts from the property. The judge says, oh, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Uh, we need to clarify something. It was late. The jury was sent out at 3.50 p.m. They were sent home for the day. Judge Aniga was concerned about the last question that Marlissa Ferreira had asked as where he got his information. And if it's not coming from the Atwalls, it's not relevant. So she says it's a foundation issue of what he will say. Marlissa says, Ferreira said there is, she knows what he's going to say and uh, she knows where it, it came from. Um, 
if Robert Woody was there, he can testify to the fence jump, but not through the fence jump um, as an unknown source of that information wherever he got that. Judge Zuniga admitted at this time on the bench, on the record, that she gets things messed up in her rulings and she she uh, gets confused on all the things that are involved in this case. Uh, she mentioned it was Michael Cooley or someone else that said they jumped the fence to steal the property. She said it's only relevant if it was the defendants that mentioned something about the fence jump. Or if he personally saw the fence jump, it is it is it is hearsay unless he did personally um, hear or see the fence jump. So they brought Robert Woody back in, and he was I think he was half changed out. He was in the back in the in the custody area, and I think they were changing his clothes to take him back to the jail. And he came back in with just uh, his shirt his, and slacks on um, outside the presence of the jury. But Hans objected that there's no actual uh, recollection. Uh, he didn't have, he hasn't really shown a loss of memory as of yet, so there's no need to refresh. It's improper refresh. Uh, Jacks to a private hearing, not in the presence of the jury. Uh, Judge Inigo says uh, Marlisa Ferreira has a foundation problem. There's no way to know how Robert Woody is going to answer that question about the fence jump unless they ask him. Uh, he's brought into back into court with no jury and he's on the stand and Judge Zuniga was doing the inquiry and asked about the Miranda Dykes question of the fence jump. Miranda Dykes asked if Corey Kaufman had jumped the fence to rip uh, somebody off and steal some property. Um, where did he get the inf the information and the, the comment? And how do you know that Corey Kaufman jumped the fence? And Robert Woody, in, in typical fashion, says, I do not recall. So she sent Robert Woody off the stand. Another issue to be dealt with in the morning. Uh, very contentious afternoon. Um, and a lot of things going on. Um, so I have my opinion of things going on. And I'm not going to say too much. Uh, I think you, you, most of you probably know how I feel about some of this stuff. So um, It was a little outrageous if you ask me. It got out of control. Uh, you're accusing an attorney of trying to uh, threaten a judge and intimidate a judge and I just think it's outrageous unless it's something really actually done so that's where we finish the day um, Robert Woody will be back tomorrow I think Robert Woody will be back for the next few days the way this is going it's almost like it's direct all over again so She's really stretched it out to the maximum of her redirect, which, supposed to, which is totally supposed to be in the scope of the defense's cross-examination. Um, and so some of this is, you know, there's a veil of what they asked in cross, and it's, it's going a little, little sideways, as always does. So uh, don't forget, I have um, PayPal buttons on the bottom of every report. To donate you can donate five dollars you can you know just the number of uh, units you want just increases it by five dollars each um, and uh, just trying to pay the bills here not looking for a lot of money I just want to pay pay expenses and this has been going on for a long time uh, I also noted that or uh, did a little c calculation uh, last night on how much money the judge has made on this case in the three years that she's been getting here and a guesstimation that I have. I've heard some figures. I don't know if how accurate it is and it's in the area of a quarter million dollars that the judge has made it off this case in three years. So, 
Um, she's got herself a nifty little retirement there too. So uh, that's where we're at. Don't forget the the, the don PayPal buttons at the bottom of the reports. Merced Tile, my one of my sponsors, been very supportive. Um, support him if you for your tile needs. He'll take care of you. And I'm not, I'm not exact. I'm not I'm not just saying that. He really is a good guy. He knows what he's doing. He, he installed the stuff for tile and things for many many years. And now he's just he's selling supplies and he has tile. He has all the supplies you need to put the tile in and all that stuff. So talk to Doug over there. Um, there's a video on my site under the featured section and uh, and you can get his information there. Uh, he's in Merced. So uh, give him a call for your tile needs. Um, so uh, that was about it. Uh, as I always say. You know, don't take my word for it. Come to court and find out for yourself. Good night, everybody.